Coming up on Doctype, we're gonna show you some stuff in 3D. Actually, I'm just gonna talk about depth in web design, which is also kinda cool. Then, we'll show you how to express yourself with regular expressions. So put on your red and blue glasses, because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by Acts as Conference and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte. Or a developer who can't tell his margin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. So the Flash versus HTML5 debate rages on. Just as Apple posted their thoughts on Flash, YouTube's developer blog also posted a few of their thoughts, and they came out a little bit in favor of Flash, at least for the time being. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff right now that HTML5 video can't handle, like uh, you know, diff streaming different bit rates, uh, being able to get to certain points in a file without downloading the whole file. There's also but, like device support and a yeah. couple of other things. So you can't do webcams, and then there's DRM. So you know, HTML5 uh, video support is advancing and growing, but not quite there yet. Yeah, so you can't just say goodbye to Flash completely yet, but it's getting there. Everything has its place, I guess. Yeah. So until then, I'm going to talk about depth in web design. And I'll show you how to find anything using regular expressions. Let's check it out. Creating a sense of depth on a web page may seem like an impossible task. If the screen is flat, how can we make it feel 3D? The trick is to think in layers. By building up your page in terms of a background, middle ground, and foreground, you can create a sense of depth. In color theory, cooler colors appear to recede back into space, while warmer colors appear to be closer to the viewer. This isn't a concrete rule, but you might have an easier time creating depth by choosing a dark or cool colored background and putting warmer tones in the foreground. For example, if you look at the home page of Doctype, the warm skin tones jump out when set against the background of blue and gray. Once you've built up your scene with different layered elements, you should apply some lighting effects to separate the different 2D planes in space. Before you start lighting your scene, you need to first consider a few things about the light source. What direction is it coming from? What color is it? And how bright is it? And so on. Obviously, there are many factors to consider here, and you could create some very complex lighting effects. When the light hits different page elements, it should create shadows on the layers below. Additionally, you can add a lot of depth by adding subtle highlights to the borders of page elements and text. Last, be sure to add some subtle gradations to curved elements, like buttons, to help define their shape. Now don't go away, because when we come back, Jim is going to tell you about regular expressions. It can be tough keeping up with all the latest in the development world when you're working like crazy! That's why you need to check out Axe as Conference 2010, a conference in Orlando, Florida dedicated to helping you learn new stuff and improve your craft. From October 28th through the 30th, you'll learn the latest techniques and tips for being an agile Ruby on Rails developer with hands-on workshops, sessions, open spaces, lightning talks, and more. For the past two years, this conference has sold out, so go to accessconference.com today, enter the code DOCTYPE, and get 15% off. We hope to see you there. Regular expressions allow us to test to see if a pattern appears in a string. We're gonna show you how to use them in JavaScript. If you're unfamiliar with the rules of regular expressions, they can be very intimidating. But once you learn the basic parts of a regular expression, you can find almost any pattern in a string. A regular expression is made out of two parts. An expression string that uses letters, characters, and special sequences to define the pattern you want to look for, and modifiers which make the regular expression act differently. For instance, making it case insensitive. Each modifier is represented by a single character. We can define a regular expression in one of two ways. First, we could call new regexp and pass it a string for the pattern and a string for the modifier characters. But JavaScript offers a literal syntax for creating regular expressions, and it uses slashes. A slash starts the pattern, and the next slash ends the pattern. And optionally, modifier characters can be placed immediately after the second slash to modify the regular expression. 
You can search for basic words or phrases in regular expressions without having to know any special characters. The characters A through Z and 0 through 9, when placed in a regular expression, typically mean you're just searching for that literal character. We'll use the match method on the string, which takes a regular expression, runs it on the string, and then returns the match results. So for instance, if we run match with the regular expression containing the letter A on the string orange, we get an array with A back in it. But if we run that same regular expression on the string purple, we get null because there's no A in purple. You can put multiple characters together to match words or phrases, or just a sequence of characters. So for instance, we could do D-O-L-L, -L, and it'll match I have $2. Or we could do two space dollars to match the phrase $2. There are several special characters in regular expressions, but the most common ones are question mark, star, and plus. The question mark says that the character before it is optional, or it can appear zero or one time. For instance, if we wanted to search for the different spellings of color, we could use this expression. C-O-L-O-U question mark R. That means the U is optional, so it could spell color either way. The star is like the question mark, but it allows the preceding character to be there zero times, one time, or many times in a row. For example, the string A-H star would match the letter A, A-H, A-H-H, and etc. The plus is just like the star, but the preceding character must occur at least once. So AH plus would match AH, AHH, and AHHH, but not just the single letter A. You can also match out of multiple characters by using groups. Groups are defined by square brackets. Any characters that are placed inside the square brackets will be allowed to be used in the match. So for example, if we wanted to match the words flips, flaps, or flops, we could use this expression, F, L, and then in a group, I, O, and A, and then close the group, and then P and S. Now any other letter between L and P that's not I, O, or A will not allow us to match. If the group begins with a caret, that inverts the group and says that any character except the ones inside of the group are acceptable for the match. So if you wanted to accept any character except vowels, you could write open square bracket, caret, A, E, I, O, U, and then close bracket. Inside of groups, you can even use ranges as a shorthand notation for defining groups of contiguous characters. For instance, if you wanted to match any letter, you could write A-Z. Or if you wanted to match a numeral, you could write 0-9. If you wanted to match either a letter or a numeral, you could do 0-9-A-Z or A-Z-0-9. The order inside groups doesn't matter. Now, a group acts like a single character. It matches only one character out of the string. You can use a question mark, star, or plus after it to match multiple characters out of the string. For instance, to match an integer number, you might want to use 0-9 and then plus on the group. And that will get one or more numerals in a row. If you want to match integers but not with leading zeros, you could do the group 1 through 9 and then the group 0 through 9 with a star. This will match one numeral, 1 through 9, and then optionally any number of numerals, 0 through 9. Now that's just a basic introduction to regular expression. There are a ton of other special ways to match patterns using regular expressions. Next time, we'll take a look at something a little more advanced. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com that's it for this week until next time be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype tv on twitter and if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of doctype send us an email at questions at doctype.tv and if you subscribe via itunes or rss you'll never miss an episode of doctype so why not so until next tuesday remember that every great web page starts with doctype